All right, hello there, y'all. Um, again, sorry I'm not there today. I had to go take Charlotte to her checkup. So we're going to go on ahead and we're going to start our notes. Okay. Um, if With these notes, if you cut them out around the outsides here, okay, and then you fold them in, it's going to look like a uh, parallelogram, which is what we are talking about today. So there's four things that if you know you have a parallelogram, then you know that this is true. So this is all like if we know that the shape is a parallelogram, like they tell us that, then there are certain things that we can know to be true. Okay, so the first thing, um, and I'm going to start here, it's if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, Okay, let me zoom in some so we can see better. There we go. Okay, so if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides are congruent. Okay, remember that means that they are equal. So up here it says if, and we're going to name it A, B, C, D is a and then for parallelogram you put a little symbol it's a parallelogram so draw two lines that are like offset from each other and then connect them it doesn't have to be perfect okay so if a b c d is a parallelogram then well our opposite sides are going to be congruent so b a would be congruent okay what side is opposite from it c d and, okay, and it's very important, both of them have to be congruent, like both pairs. And BC would be congruent to AD. So, for example, if BA is 3, then CD also has to be 3. And if BC is 5, then AD has to be 5. So, for a parallelogram, your opposite sides are congruent to each other. Okay, next one we're going to cover here. Is about angles. Okay, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. So again, that means that they are equal. So up here in our picture, we can see um, angle B has two lines. And well, which angle is directly opposite, like diagonal from it? Angle D. And you see how angle D also has two lines? That means that they are congruent. Same thing with angle A and angle C. They have the same markings, so that means that they are congruent. So if A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, then we know for sure that angle B is congruent to angle D and angle A would be congruent to angle C. So again, if you have a parallelogram, then your opposite angles are going to be congruent. So if angle B is 100, that means angle D is also 100. If angle A is 80, that means that angle C is going to be 80. Okay, we're going to go back down over here to the bottom left. Okay, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, so this is they're telling you that it is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, so basically consecutive angles means the angle that comes right after one. So like angle A, its consecutive angles are B and D. So like those would be the consecutive angles for angle A. So right here, if you look over here, it says the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B has to equal 180. And you go over here and you look, okay, angle B, what are its consecutive angles? Well, 
angle A and angle C. So look, we already have A and B. And then now like angle B plus angle C, they have to equal 180. So basically, if you have two angles and they're right next to each other, then they have to add up to 180. So we can do this like with a couple of colors or lines. So angle A, okay, I'm going to mark it with an arc. So there's angle A, and then here's angle B, okay, and then again angle C over here is going to get one line, and then angle D will get two. So essentially if you have one line plus two lines, it has to equal up to 180. Okay, and then our last one here. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. And remember, bisect means to cut in half. So each diagonal is cut in half. So if A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, then BE, so that's this top half right here, is going to be congruent to ED. And, uh, let's do the other one, AE is going to be congruent to EC. Okay. So let's go ahead, let me pull up the assignment. If my computer will cooperate. Okay, here we go. All right, and let's look at this here. Um, so, these first ones, it says find the value of x in each parallelogram. Okay, right here, guys. Look, the 51 is right here, and then the x, you see how they're like together on the same side? Well, those are consecutive angles, so they have to add up to 180. So we know x plus 51 equals 180. And then you can solve that for x. Okay, next kind that we have. Um, it says find the values of the variables in parallelogram D, E, F, G. Okay. Um, for number five, I only want you to use D, G, and E, F. Don't worry about this G, F, and D, E. Okay. So D, G is this guy right here. And E, F is the other one over here. And in a parallelogram, we know opposite sides. They have to be congruent. So they have to be equal. So for number five... We know that dg, so this 2x plus 2, has to be equal to this ef, so 3x minus 3. And then you have to solve this for x. Okay, and then for number 6, I want you to use um, the other two pairs of sides, so scratch off this first two. So you're going to use the de and the gf. And again, since it's a parallelogram, those opposite sides have to be congruent. So the way that we set up for number five is the same way you set up for number six. Okay, question seven. Um, again, look, we have opposite sides, right? So they're going to have to be congruent to each other. Um, and it says you have to find B and also the side length or the angle, whichever one they're giving you. So number seven here, Step one is to set this B plus 14.5 equal to the 20.5. And then you find B. And then step two is you're going to have to plug in. Okay, because up here, you already know the top side is going to be 20.5. Okay, there's a free answer for you. But on this one, you got to find B and then you got to plug it in here. So you have to find that side as well. Okay, and then number eight, again, look, 
these are consecutive angles, so they need to add up and equal to 180. And so then you find S, and then you have to plug it back in for both of them, because they're going to be different. Okay, on this, on 9 and 10, um, it says find the value of each variable. Okay, guys, these are on the diagonals. So what do we know about the diagonals? They are being bisected. So each half is equal to each other. So for number 9, um, I have the 2H here and the H plus 5. This 2H plus 2, I'm not even worried about it because it's on the other diagonal. All I need is these ones. So I'm going to say 2H is equal to H plus 5, and then you solve for H. And number 10, same way. Okay, 11, 12, 13, very easy. These angles are opposite. So what do we know from our notes about opposite angles? They should be equal. So for number 11, 3A is equal to 114. So just solve for A. And then 12 and 13, same thing. Okay, guys, so that's it. So you should have your notes completed, and you should have this assignment, like, mostly done. Um, make sure you get it done by the end of class and turn it in. There's not much else to it. See you guys tomorrow.